Hi everyone, Kirk Summers, Trinity Presbyterian Church, York Mills, here in the, the basement of the church, the, the lower hall just outside of uh, Juan's custodial office, and, and, and here with some things that we are going to recycle. And I, I wanted to share these things with you this morning. These are all the ballasts uh, from the fluorescent lights that we used to have throughout the church here in the lower hall. and. Uh, um, in, in the sanctuary also, and especially in the, the North Hall and Founders Hall. Uh, Juan made a, a huge effort before the virus uh, hit us and um, did a tremendous amount of work in replacing all the ballasts. And uh, these are heading to the recycler. And then, of course, replacing all the, the bulbs and changing the, the fluorescent ones uh, to the LED ones. And this is all the, the wrapping, the cardboard wrapping that um, covered the new uh, LED uh, bulbs. We've got a, a lot of, of recycling ahead of us here. And the recycling, it comes about because we were, we were hoping and planning for a brighter tomorrow. Um, part of that brightness and a huge part of it is that we'll save um, a lot of money by doing this, absolutely. And it's, uh, it's better for the environment and um, we believe there'll be a, a brighter light too. So three things combining together, some cost savings, um, a better light and, and some goodness for the environment. So uh, this huge undertaking that, that we made as Trinity Church to, to have a brighter uh, tomorrow. And, and we think today as we turn to passages in the Bible in just a, a few moments about, about the things that, that we can do as church and as individuals, uh, to bring about a, a brighter tomorrow, knowing that we don't necessarily know what tomorrow will bring, but we can bring ourselves and our faith to it. We're, we're delighted to have all these, these new bulbs at the church and to be about the recycling program, and it'll be a great and glorious day when we are together here and sharing our brighter tomorrow. Take care, be, be back in just a moment. We share together today three Bible readings. Each one in their own way tells us that a lot about tomorrow we, we don't know. And a lot about tomorrow we do. Reading first from Proverbs chapter 27 and the first verse. Do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a, a day may bring. Oh my goodness, there isn't any one of us who, who could challenge that. We, we don't know what our tomorrows will bring. And, and the Bible from Old to New Testament is, is very aware that the, the frailty and intentions of humanity are especially such that we don't quite know how all the tomorrows will unfold. In the New Testament, in the, the letter of James at chapter 4, verses 13 to 15, we, we hear these words, Come now, you who say, uh, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. And in the Gospel of Matthew at the sixth chapter, verses 33 to 34, but seek First, the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. 
Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. That too we are poignantly aware of, not only in these recent days of the virus, but, uh, but throughout our, our life journey. We know that um, sufficient for the day is its own trouble, and, and we know not what tomorrow will bring. But we, we go back uh, to James. And James says, you know, you've got all these plans to do this, that, and the other thing. But first, instead, you ought to say, before engaging in all those plans and, and, and seeking in a plan to bring that desire about, the, the first thing to seek and the first thing to desire is the sovereignty of God, the will and want and way of God made known in Jesus Christ. If the Lord wills, we will live and we will do this or that. Because first, first in this life, we are the Lord's. First for the Lord our God, we live. And therefore, any planning about what is yet to be does well to first plan according to the will of God, and even and all the more does first to say, I trust you, God. I trust the way that you have created me to be in this world. I trust your will for this world, your sovereignty, your providence, your care for the children of your creation. So yes, we, we do go about planning for multiple things. The encouragement from James is to be about that which the Lord wills, all the while trusting the power and the presence and the purpose of God. And there in Matthew, that beautiful verse, which we have, we have talked about in other previous ministry moments, seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. And, and that is followed by the verses about not being anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. And, and speaking about sufficient trouble today, it's all wrapped up in, in trusting God seeking first what is God's way, such that, that we will live this, this present moment embraced by God's love and wanting to be God's love. And in that way, we bring about a brightness. In that way, we bring about a brighter today that positions us for a brighter tomorrow when we let the light of God made known in Jesus Christ shine into our lives. These are tough, tough days. God knows that. God's Son, Jesus, lived like as we are, yet without sin. In all humanity was the divine nature of God in Jesus. These, these are tough days, uh, these days of the virus, as we wait for the vaccine, as we do what we are supposed to do and do well. There, there is trouble sufficient for today. But to that trouble, to our lives, is the constant bright light that God is shining not only in our present time, but all times yet to come in this life and in the life eternal. So friends in Christ, children of God, amidst all that is and is not in your life right now, let let God be there. Trust that God is there. And may that letting in and that trust by, by word, by spirit, by church, by following Jesus, by looking at the wonder of creation, may that letting in of God, may that trusting of God bring a, a brightness to your church, even to the basement, a brightness to your home, a brightness to your life. People of the living light that is Jesus Christ, let him shine on you that you 
can shine on all others, shining for him, bringing about a brighter tomorrow. Thanks be to God for these readings from God's own most holy word. Amen. In all of the story in the Bible, one certain thing for sure we know is that God loves us. Again and again, He prepares for us a future, a future of hope. We do not know what tomorrow will bring, but know again that tomorrow in itself is a whole new gift from our Creator. I know it is hard not to be anxious about the future. It will be better. The sun will come up and that everything will fall into their right places at the right time in all of God's perfect plan for each and every one of us. Here's a little song to cheer you up today, to lift your spirits. Wrapped in the bright light of God's love in Jesus Christ for all that was our yesterday, all that is our today, and all that shall be our tomorrow, friends in Christ, wrapped in the bright light of God's love, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that you have decided to shine your light upon us in so many ways, in the very gift of life itself of life in the resurrected power of Jesus Christ, in the beauty of creation, in the bond of friendship, in the wonder of church. Thank you for, for shining upon us to give us brightness in this day and bright hope for tomorrow. 
you are so aware, as we are too, that there are troubling times in our midst and in our hearts, that, that we are fretful in, in mind and worried in spirit. And, and yet your word from Proverbs and from James and from Matthew tells us to seek you first, to trust your will, that any plan that, that we're about, any strategy we have, any wanting for this or that, is to be in response to your will first. So we pray for deeper trust in you, in our lives, in our congregation's life, in the life of this whole world. Help us to trust you, to grab even greater hold of Jesus, knowing that he holds us now and forever. We thank you for everyone who has taken time to shine your light through themselves to us. Help us so to shine in the midst of what is today and be confident in you for all our tomorrows. We pray, O oh God, that, that those who right now feel so very much in the dark, alone, afraid, isolated, that, that they, that we, will draw even more closer to you and to each other. Help us to pray. Help us to, to learn your living word and make it alive with our words and our ways. Keep us close, keep us kind, keep us being people who, who first are all for you, knowing that you are all for us. These things we ask today, knowing we can at any time and anywhere come to you in prayer. Knowing that we come now in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. I can remember um, being in high school. Uh, those years were 1975 to 1980, East 2 Secondary School in Barrie. And, and I can remember there being sort of uh, in September of 1975 thinking, oh my goodness, I think I need a, like a day timer or something. Uh, at East 2 Secondary School, we didn't have a semester system. We had a, like a, a ladder of classes. They eight, eight classes one day and then reverse and eight classes the next day the other way around. And eight and eight and eight and eight. And you went from September right on through uh, to June. I feel really um, uh, sorry, uh, if you will. I feel um, concerned for, for all the teachers and, and students and everyone wrapped it up in education right now at every level. And I think of those in, in high school where you're, you're making one class in, in just a matter of, of weeks. And uh, it's, what, it's what you have to do. And, and I just want to acknowledge that 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 must be quite a thing to plan um, to get figured out how you'll put your day together as a, as a teenager and a teacher of teenagers and people all wrapped up in education. It's, it's hard to have a plan right now. And I can remember giving uh, my daytime or giving way to my, my first electronic organizer kind of thing, a mobile phone with a calendar on it. And, 
And I'm thinking about all that today and all the plans that we have and all the schedules we have and all the meetings we have to get to and all the time when we don't know quite what to do because our schedule is all changed around. And I can remember one day, uh, I was actually at Knox College at University of Toronto, um, learning how or trying how um, to be a minister. And um, I can remember looking at my day timer and, and realizing that I was kind of letting it control me and my day was just full of getting things done and this and this and this and this and this. And and I can remember just thinking that it would be better to start my day and say, here I am, Lord. Want to bear the fruits of your spirit. Want to obey the commandments of your son. And that's the first thing I'd like to do. And, and then all these other things will we'll get to in your good time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.